Wednesday, everyone. Let's get started with Bible class with a word of prayer. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. I pray that you would continue to be with all those who are suffering from coronavirus, that you would just uh, wipe this out from the nation, from the world. Lord, we know that you have the power to do that. I pray that you would be with each family, that you would provide for their specific needs. Be with each of my students, help them to understand the things that they are being taught. I pray that you would also help them to be obedient and kind to their parents and to their siblings and to anyone who is taking care of them during these difficult times. I pray, Lord, that you would give them just special grace and wisdom to handle the situation. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, we're going to get started with our new song. This is the second verse, so let's talk it through. It says, Praise ye the Lord who with marvelous wisdom hath made thee. That word hath, that's just an old English word for had made thee. And thee is just an old English word for you. So praise ye, another old English word for you, you praise the Lord, who with marvelous wisdom had made you. So praise God who con sabiduría made you exactly as you are, you are just the way God wants you to be. Then it says, um, decked thee, so that, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Decked thee with health and with loving hand guided and stayed thee. So the idea of decked thee with health, that means um, he's given you your health. Decked you is like to decorate you. So that means he's given you your health, your salute with loving hand guided and stayed thee. So he is our Hia. He shows us where we should go and he keeps us on the right path and he protects us. Then it says, How oft in grief hath not he brought thee relief, spreading his wings for to shade thee. So that's the idea that how often in grief that word oft is old for often, which means like um, con frequencia. In grief, when you're sad, when you're triste, hath not he brought thee relief? So when you're sad, he gives you things to help you be happy or to give you at least peace about it. Then it says, spreading his wings for to shade thee. So just like um, an angel or a bird spreads out its wings and can cover something. Jesus covers us with his wings to protect us and to comfort us, like a big hug almost. Okay, so let's give it a try. Ready? On the count of three. I'm going to sing it through. Join me because it's the same tune as before, and we'll sing it through two times. So here we go. First time. One, two, three. Praise ye the Lord who with marvelous wisdom hath made Decked thee with health and with loving hand guided and stayed thee. How oft in grief hath not he brought thee relief, spreading his wings for to shade thee. Very nice. Okay, let's try it again one more time through on the count of three. One, two, three. Praise ye the Lord who with marvelous wisdom hath made thee, decked thee with health and with loving hand guided and stayed thee. How oft in grief hath not he brought thee relief, spreading Excellent work. Now we're going to practice our verse. We're going to do the um, activity where we erase words, but because this is such a long verse, we're going to erase five at a time. You ready? Here we go. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the winter in the harvest. 
you want to say winter instead of harvest. Here we go. Let's erase meet. That's one. Guide is two. Harvest is three. B is four. And which is five. Okay. Let's read it now. Proverbs 6.6. 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Here we go. Let's do gathereth. Ant. Having. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. Let's do wise. That's one. Proverbs 6, 6. There it goes. That's two. Provided is three. In is four, and overseer is five. Oops, they're disappearing fast. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, <clears throat> excuse me, provided her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Let's do sluggard. Her. The, two, and ruler. Ready? Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, excuse me, provided her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. All right, five more. This is the last time with me, then you'll say it by yourself. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, just some little words left. Here we go. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. All right, we're going to get rid of five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this time you need to say it all by yourself, but I'm going to say the reference with you. Proverbs 6, 6. you do? Okay, I'm going to erase these words and now we'll say it together. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, get, excuse me, provided her food. Her, mm, let's try that again. I'm sorry, I messed it up. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Okay, we are going to move on now to say our Spanish verse one time and then into our lesson. Proverbios 6, 6. Ve a la hormiga, oh perizoso, mira sus caminos y se sabio. La cual no teniendo capitán, ni gobernador, ni señor, prepara en el verano su comida, 
y recoge en el tiempo de la siega su mantenimiento. Okay, so Jesus was in what city in our last lesson? Do you remember? That's right, it was Capernaum. So while Jesus was in Capernaum, remember that um, he was teaching the people, he was healing people, he healed the centurion's servant in our last lesson. Well, then he moved on to a city called Nain. It's um, N-A-I-N, or some people would pronounce it Nain. So he moved over there and was teaching, and when he went into the city, he saw a funeral going on. They were burying someone. Now, it was very customary in this time that when someone died, they took them out on something called a bier, and they would go out and they would bury them, or they would put them in a cave to bury them, all kinds of ways that they would take care of the bodies. And so, as Jesus was walking, he sees that there's a widow there. She is this boy's mother. This was her only son. And the widow is there, and many people of the city are with her, carrying this boy out to be buried. And Jesus, when he saw this, and he saw her sadness, he had compassion on her. You know, back then, someone who was a widow, that means that their husband has died. And for a widow back in those days, it was very difficult for them to be able to provide for themselves. It was very hard. So a widow would have to be taken care of by someone else. And her son would be the one who would take care of her. But now her son has died, and she has no one left. And so Jesus had compassion on her. When you see people that are going through something that's difficult, do you have compassion on them? Are you willing to show them love and to help them? You should be willing to do whatever you can. Maybe you have a compañero in your class that maybe their abuelo or abuela has died. You should have compassion on them. Be able to go up to them, give them a hug, play with them. They may not want to talk about it, but maybe they just want you near to be friendly to them. Well, Jesus, he could do more than just give this woman a hug. What do you, what do you think he can do? He can heal him, right? Even though he's dead, that's not beyond Jesus' power. Jesus can bring him back from the dead. So Jesus went over to the widow, comforted her. Then he went over to where the man was, and he put his hand here on the buyer. Guess what happened? He said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Did he arise? Oh yeah, he did. He got up and he was all better. He, he wasn't dead, obviously, and whatever he had been suffering from that had killed him, gone. He was perfectly fine, a healthy, normal young man. And he was sent on his way to his mother. Oh, I can only imagine the big hug she gave him. Oh, the tears of joy that her son was back with her. And everyone around who saw it, they were shocked. They were amazed. Who is this man who could do this? They said, surely, maybe he is one of the, a great prophet come to visit us. Maybe God is here among his people. And so word of what had happened spread throughout the city and throughout the region how God had raised her son from the dead, which was very important for people to learn who Jesus was. More and more people are beginning to believe that there is something special about Jesus, not that he's just some great person who can do tricks, but that he is someone who has true power that comes from God. Do you believe that Jesus has, the, has true power that comes from God? When you pray, are you willing to pray for things that you know you need and only God can give you? That measures the strength of our faith. If you're willing to pray for things that you know that only God can give you and you trust and believe in him, then that is true faith and he will provide those things that are within his will. So let's take a moment now to pray before it's time for us to go. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for this example of faith and compassion. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to have faith in you to be able to provide whatever we need and compassion on others to be able to help them in times of need. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, that's it for our Bible lesson today. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.